it happened again. You're blasting open your opponent's king and suddenly a king hunt. You keep checking your opponent's king with hope to trap it in the corner and checkmate, but you run out of checks and the king eventually gets to safety. That's where the skewer comes in. The skewer is one of the three classic tactics in chess. You have the fork, the pin, and the skewer. Unlike many tactics like the fork, this tactic cannot be performed by a knight only queens, bishops, and rooks. The skewer is very similar to the pin, but completely different at the same time. You see, the pin goes our piece, a weak piece, but then the stronger piece for the black piece is behind. Whereas the skewer goes our piece, still the same, a strong piece, and then a weaker piece behind it. Now that you know what a skewer is and when it can be used, Let's test your skills. In this position, it is white to play and win. Pause the video to solve the problem. I'll give you five seconds to pause. I hope you solved it. This is the solution if you didn't. In the black camp, we quickly identify several weaknesses. First of which is the deserted queen side meaning black has no defenders or attackers on this side of the board. Second, we can easily observe two more weaknesses. The black king is in the center and still has not castled, and its rook is unprotected and trapped in the corner. So upon analyzing the position for the white pieces and looking at many types of moves, we come upon a very nice move, rook c1. Rook c1 threatens rook c8 check, which is a skewer between the king and the rook. If you try to do anything as the black pieces, which is very important to look at, you'll see that the black king can only really go to d8, which is an even bigger blunder because there's checkmate, and the rook is kind of trapped, can't really get out of that skewer. Let's say it's only move rook g8, there's still the skewer, and here it's also checkmate. So black's best move is like e6 or pu pushing the f-pawn, but here we have rook c8 check, king moves, and we take the rook with a win. Puzzle number two is for ratings 500 to 1200 elo. Black just played rook b3 check, skewering the king and queen and forcing the reply rook to b4 to block. And it's in this position that you take it away and find the winning solution for the black pieces. I'll give you five seconds to pause and solve. From this position, it was very important to notice that we're one pawn move away from promoting to a queen or rook. This is very important given that if we don't promote, we basically can't win this, we're down a queen. But if we promote now, we just lose a rook here, right? So this would be completely losing. And so that's why you have to attract the king to the b4 square with rook takes b4 first, check and another skewer, and now king takes b4, and now you would have had to see promotes to queen with check. And from here, there is no way the white pieces can avoid being skewered. If the king goes down three ways, any of the three, this is what you play. So king a3, let's say, queen a1 check, forcing the king back up to the surface, and then you have a beautiful skewer on b1, winning the queen in the game. And if the king just goes sideways, any of the sideways doesn't matter. Queen b1 check with the exact same skewer winning the game. I hope you solved this one. This one is a bigger challenge for you with a rating range of 1200 to 1700 elo. Your turn, try to solve, white to play and win. I'll give you five seconds to pause. For starters here, you had to observe two weaknesses. Here, the c6 pawn is attacked by our knight, and also this bishop is quite weak in the center. Although it's a centralized piece, it looks like it has a lot going for it. After a simple move that you try to knock off the defender of this c6 pawn, you will find the move c4. And after c4 here attacking the bishop, the bishop is forced to go to e6, and now you can play your combination. Knight takes c6 is what needed to be calculated, forking this rook and this bishop. Now black has one of two moves to keep both of these pieces. Both of them are rook moves to defend the bishop. And so after rook e8 or rook d7, doesn't really matter. Now you would have to find the second 
kind of tactic, which is taking off the defender from c5. And here it is knight takes e7 check, rook takes, which is forced, and now bishop takes c5. And now we win a piece and get ourselves a skewer. And once one of these rooks move, you can just take the other rook, king takes, and we are up a full rook in this endgame, completely winning. Okay, so you've aced the first three out of hard work. Let's see if you have talent. In this one, it is also white to play and win with the skewer for levels 1700 to 2000. Here, black just played rook h2 to try to trade rooks and go into a favorable rook endgame, and it is up to you to find what white plays in this position. Pause the video to solve. I'll give you five seconds. So right off the bat, two candidate moves come to mind. Rook a7, check on the king, and rook h7. Let's look at rook a7 first. If the king goes to f6 here, you would have g7, and this is pretty winning for white because you're threatening to queen your pawn, and after, let's say, rook g2, you have rook h6 that's winning on the spot. The king would have to either go to g5 and you queen, or rook g6, and you can just trade off the rooks and you queen. But after check, here king f8 by black is super strong in fact it's really hard for white to win this if you thought g7 check king g8 and there's simply no follow-up for the white pieces so it begs the question is rook a7 good well now you consider your second candidate move and that is rook h7 check if king e8 king f8 or king d8 black is met with rook a8 checkmate so Black is forced to take this rook on h7, and now we have g takes h7 threatening to queen and forcing another outcome out of the black pieces, which is rook h2 to defend this h8 square. And now you had to find the spicy move deep into this combination that grants you the star for 1700 to 2000, and that is the masterpiece, in my opinion, rook a8 threatening to queen your pawn and forcing black to remove this pawn from the board as soon as possible, letting for you to just play rook a7 with a beautiful skewer on the king and rook. And here you just win a rook and it's completely winning. And I hope you solve this one as well. We have arrived at the final boss. I'm scared of this one and so should you. This was played in a real game in 1987. Here white just played c4 as Grandmaster Ivan Sokolov, you have to play like a GM and find the winning combination with the black pieces, always involving a skewer. I'll give you five seconds to pause the problem. This problem is not 2000 ELO to 2500 for the first two moves. They're fairly obvious, and really it's the natural moves in this position. Slow incremental progression of this pawn, with e2 threatening to play rook d1 and win the game, which forces one move out of white, and that is rook e1 here. If you found this, really good for you, but this wasn't the hard part of this problem. Even the follow-up is quite easy actually rook e rook d1 here threatening this rook and leaving white with only one defensive move the defensive moves for white here for you to find are uh, just as tough as the attacking moves for black and the defensive move here is king g2 a really really nice one so if i take your rook here you take my rook and i have trouble queening my pawn so now you had to find the actual crazy move of this position. And for me, it's why this is so beautiful, hard, and counterintuitive. It's rook f1. Here, Ivan Sokolov gives up his second, his past prime pawn, the, the, the masterpiece of his position, the sole advantage of his position, for what? So here, rook f1, if you take any of the rooks, I just promote with the queen and I win. So you have to take this rook, this pawn, it is forced. And now we have this mini skewer I will call rook g1 check. Skewering the king and rook and forcing the king to defend the rook with king f3, king h3. If king h3 here, black has a win on the spot that is still hard to find. You have to see this all in your head, right? Rook d3 check. 
and here the idea is to pull this king off the rook like string cheese and if the king goes to h2 now we win the rook and win this happened in the game but if the king goes to h4 you just have rook h1 and it's going to be checkmate on h2 the king is in a mating net so king h3 is not good here and the only other possibility is king f3 and now rook d3 it works but you have to find some really nice things after King here yet to find rook d4. If you saw this, full points, you got it. But there's also the more crafty rook f1 here, trying to pull the king off of the rook here. And if the king moves out east, you just take the rook on g4. And if you block with rook f2, you can deflect the king off the g4 rook with, with rook takes f2. And after king takes, rook takes g4, it's completely over. If you nailed all of these five problems, ace to you i'm sure you'll do extremely well in your games with the skewer tactic when it's available to you and if you still need hard work on this you still need to work hard on the skewer get these patterns in you can get a 55 percent discounted membership with my chess.com link in my bio on there you can have unlimited skewer exercises for any levels and work your way up the ranks so that you never miss a skewer tactic in your life ever again.